Today we're talking about the sorting functions that are included in the C standard library and double pointers. Welcome back everybody. Today's video comes from Nell. Still struggling with double pointers, especially when working with QSort or QuickSort. But really this issue isn't specific to QSort. It's like any of the built-in sorting functions are going to give you this same type of issue. The confusion seems to come in when you're dealing with double pointers and maybe even the function pointers that are involved in order to make these sorting functions more generic. So today I thought we would go through an example, try to demystify things a little bit, make sense for why you see these double pointers showing up. For some of you, I hope this helps you get over your pointer phobia that you might be suffering from. And for the rest of you, I just hope this might be a nice introduction to the sorting functions that are available in C that you might not realize exist. Or maybe you knew they existed, but you just haven't used them before. There is going to be source code on this video. And as usual, source code is available through Patreon. A huge thanks to all of you who support the channel, who make this possible. But now let's jump into the code and see if we can sort some stuff out with double pointers. Okay, so let's start with a really simple example. What I'm gonna do is come down here and let's make an array. I'm just going to make some integers that we're going to sort later on. So let's come up here and say something like this, pound define array length, and let's say that it's 10, just because why not? And then down here, let's say int values. These are going to be the values that we are going to be sorting. So what I'm going to do is make two for loops and i equals zero, i less than array length. So we'll go through the whole thing, i plus plus. And all we're gonna do here is set our values. So each, we'll set the ith value and we're gonna set it equal to a random number somewhere between zero and 1,999. And then let's come down here and let's make a second for loop. I'll explain why there's two for loops in a minute, but we come down here and we'll just say print F and let's print out the index. So percent D and then a tab character and another percent D and a new line. And so that's going to be, we're gonna print out I and then we're going to print out the ith value. So what this is gonna do is it's going to fill an array with 10 random integers, and then it's going to print out those values. Now, I also have a make file in here. This is gonna compile things. So just so we can try it out, we come in here and compile and we run it and you can see sure enough, okay, so we get values zero through nine and they are random. Now this is pseudo random. If I run this twice, I am gonna get the same set of values. That's not a concern. Um, we could of course randomize it using srand, but for our sorting purposes, having it be repeatable is actually kind of useful, at least for now. Okay, so now let's say that I wanna sort these numbers. Let's say I wanna put them in order from largest to smallest or smallest to largest. Now I could implement my own sorting algorithm and there are a lot of different options to choose from. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see videos about specific sorting algorithms. But today we're gonna use the built-in functions. So now if we come down here and check out the algorithm for QSort. So on your machine, on your platform, you may see other sorting algorithms. For example, on my Mac, there are a few additional options, but they're basically all going to function in the same way. So your platform like this might have merge sort, heap sort, quick sort. Quick sort's usually the fastest of the three. So that's the one I'm gonna play with today. But for the purposes of this video, it doesn't really matter because we use all of them in essentially the same way. So each of them are going to take in a pointer. It's called base. That is actually the location of memory where your your array starts. So this is the beginning of the array that I want to sort. Then we have this next argument, which is the number of members in the array. And then we have the size of the individual members. How many elements in the array, how big they each are. And then we're going to come into this function pointer here, which is our compare function. Now, why are we providing a function? Well, this is their way of making these functions generic, meaning I can sort an array of anything I want. It can be ints, it can be floats, structs, strings, it really doesn't matter. But there isn't a generic way to compare two variables in C, especially if I don't know what types they're going to be. Now, if I knew that they were always gonna be ints, then I could just use the greater than or less than operator. If I knew they were going to be strings, I could just use str comp, but I don't know what's going to be passed in. So we're going to let the user tell us how to compare these elements by providing a pointer to a function. That's what this is doing right here. Okay, so now if we come up here, let's let's just add our QSort call in here. We're gonna say QSort. So in between, this is why I put two for loops is I want to create the array, sort it, and then print it out. So if we say QSort, our values, the number is gonna be array length, the size is gonna be the size of int, which on most platforms is going to be four. And then we need some kind of 
function, I'll call it compare. Okay, and of course we're getting the regs, red squiggly because I have not defined it yet, so let's get to that. So now let's just pop up here and let's create a compare function. This is going to tell us how to compare these two integers. So we'll make it int compare like this. And basically it's gonna take in a const void pointer. I'm gonna call it PA, we call it whatever we want const void pointer pb. So it's comparing a and b and it's a pointer to a and b. So that's the p, a and p, b. Anyway, hopefully that's clear enough. And then just for clarity, what I'm going to do here is come down and say int a and we're going to sign because we really want to get these two integers that we're comparing. Now I could do this all in one line, but just to help you see what's going on, what I'm going to do here is first take PA, right? So we got PA. Now, why is it a void pointer? Why not just pass in the elements themselves? Why are these not ints? And again, this is because we're trying to be generic and a void pointer can point to anything. And so if we wanna be able to sort anything, we've gotta have a void pointer because that can point to anything. Okay, so in this case, I know the arguments PA and PB are going to point to integers. They're two elements in my values array, but the compiler doesn't know they point to ints. So I'm gonna have to give a little cast here. So I'm gonna say this is actually should be an int pointer. I know that PA points to an int, okay? So now once I've casted it, once I tell it this is an int pointer, then I can come in here and I can dereference it. So that's gonna get me the value that it points to, okay? So if we come down here and do the same thing with B, so we're gonna say, okay, now we have A and B, and then simply all I can do is just say return A minus B. So what this is gonna do is take the difference of A and B, because that's the way compare is supposed to behave. So if, if A is less than B, then it's going to return a negative value. And if A is greater than B, it's gonna return a positive value. And if it is zero, that means they're equal. Okay, so now this should work, hopefully. So if I come down here and we compile it, rate, and if we come down and we run it, we'll look at that. Now you can see that we have 10 sorted integers, so they are now in order from least to greatest. And let's say, you know, I mentioned before, what if we wanted to go greatest to smallest? You could just come in here and you could just change this compare function, do B minus A, we recompile, and if we run it, now you can see we're going from greatest to smallest. So this is essentially how we use these sorting functions, and it's kind of nice. It gives us a very generic approach as long as we are willing to define the comparison function that determines how we compare two elements in the way that we specifically want to. But in the original question that inspired the video, Nell was asking about double pointers, and you notice we don't see any of those yet. We have some pointers here. We're casting to a pointer and we're dereferencing. But in the example that Nell sent me, the double pointers came in when we use these functions to sort an array of pointers. So for that, let's jump over to example two and just see how this looks. Okay, so I'm gonna come down here, give myself a little more room. Now this example, this is one I'm not gonna write from scratch. I wrote this beforehand. It is essentially doing the same thing, just slightly more complicated data. Okay, so what we have up here is we have a person struct right here that's going to record information about a person. So it's got a name and an age and a height. And then if we come down here to main, then what we have is we're going to allocate a, we're going to have a double pointer here to people. So this is an array of pointers to people. Now why use pointers? Well, it, there's a lot of benefits to using pointers. It allows us to more quickly swap array elements without copying the entire struct. It also allows us to free one of the elements and allocate space for a new one without freeing the entire thing. So here we have an array of people. We're using calloc to allocate memory for it. So again, the number of people, the size of the elements, which are each pointers. So these are just yeah, so the size of a pointer. And then I also made this function make person, which goes through and allocates a new person struct and then fills it with name, age, and height, and then returns this pointer that we allocated. So down here then I'm just coming through and rather than having random numbers, I'm actually putting people in here. So we got five people. So I have five lovely people in here with some different information, different ages and different heights. Then we're going to again use QSort. Again, we're passing in our array, num people. So this is again, the length of the array, the size of the elements of the array, because now they're pointers, they're not ints. And then we've got this function called compare people. We'll go look at that in just a second. Then what I'm gonna do right here is we just print, I'm gonna print a header row and then have a for loop that goes through and prints out the information for each person. And then when it's, when it's done printing each person, it frees the person. And then when it's done, it frees the whole array, okay? So pretty straightforward. Now let's just take a look at that comparison because this is where you might see double pointers. And for some reason, we see two asterisks together. This makes people, they get kind of nervous. So, so the point here, the thing to keep in mind is you remember from the previous comparison, we knew we 
were pointing to an integer. We were pointing to an int, and so we knew that the thing pointing to it, which is the ad, so the address of that int is what's going to be passed in to compare, so we cast it to an int pointer. Well, over here in example two, what we are pointing to is a pointer, okay? So literally what we're saying here is we're going to cast it to a pointer to a person pointer, or in other words, that's a double pointer. So this is really doing the exact same thing that we did before, except the thing we're pointing to is a pointer, not an int, and so we need to cast it to a pointer to a pointer, and that's really all that's going on here, and then we can come down here and we just do, we're, in this case, we're sorting by height, uh, we could sort by age, we could sort by name, whatever, and I could do something more complicated, I just picked something simple for this example, but so now if we come down and we compile it, we can say example two, and we can run this, and you can see, sure enough, they all get printed out, and they get sorted by height. So that's all there is to it. Nell, I hope that clears up some of the issues about the double pointers. I hope it's clear why we're using them here. For the rest of you, I hope this is a useful example. I hope it gives you some insights in how you can use the built-in sorting functions in the C standard library, something you can take advantage of in your next project. Do let me know down in the comments if you have a favorite sorting algorithm and you know, or one that you want me to feature in a future video. And until next time, I'll see you later.